Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we've got a real quick and easy one for you. Now on this channel we talk about in quite a lot of detail how when it comes to using QuickBooks you should be getting more out of it. So you should be using the reports, the cash flow forecasting, all those great tools which makes having to put all that data into QuickBooks really worthwhile. And that's definitely still the case. But from time to time, you are forced to use a particular piece of software because maybe HMRC are asking you to do something or something within your industry has forced you to move over to that particular software. And for a lot of you listening, I assume that most of that time is down to MTD, so making tax digital. And especially in this case, MTD for VAT, so making tax digital for VAT. Now, if you fall within that category, you may want to wonder how to file your VAT return on QuickBooks Online. And that's exactly what this video is all about. So let's join us and let's have a look and see exactly how you file your return on QuickBooks Online. Let's have a look. My name is Aaron Patrick, I'm a Chartered Accountant, a Certified UK Trainer with a fancy new logo, Head of Accounts over at Boffix and also that QuickBooks chap on the Tinterwebs. Now here at this channel, as I said, we talk a lot about all the fancy features and functionality you have in QuickBooks and how it can help you and your business. And don't get me wrong, that is essential and that is exactly what makes me passionate about doing these videos for each and every one of you. But let's not forget, most of the reason we're doing this is because of some statutory requirement and majority of the time it's down to VAT. So if you're in that camp and having to file a VAT return, then let's have a look and see what we can do. Also, let's see if we can save you some money along the line as well when it comes to VAT. Let's have a look. Okay, so first of all, before we go in there, if you are looking for a guide on how to set up VAT in terms of HMRC and go through that, then head over to the Bopix Tax Tips channel where we've done a whole breakdown of how to set yourself up for VAT, how to get yourself a VAT account and go from there. This one though, we're going to be talking about or assuming you've already gone through those steps. So you are already a VAT registered business. You already have a VAT account and you are looking to file your first VAT return on QuickBooks Online. So let's jump straight into QuickBooks and find out exactly how to file that VAT return. Let's have a look. Well, at the moment we're in our trusty account, but what about if you've started QuickBooks for the first time? Let's go and have a look at that sort of a scenario. Okay, so if like that, I've now created myself a brand new client called QBO VAT, and I've got my quick tour. Now, this has got no data in whatsoever, but that doesn't stop me from getting my VAT set up, and you want to be doing this straight away. So to do that, I go to my taxes section down here. From taxes section, it'll give me the option to set up VAT. There, all I need to do is tell them details I need to. So when do I want to start calculating from? So in my case, January. When do I want to start submitting returns? Monthly, quarterly, half yearly or yearly? In my case, and for most people, it will be quarterly. Do I want to be on the standard rated scheme or the cash account scheme? Now, I would talk to your accountant to make sure you get that absolutely spot on. Or head over to Boffitt's Tax Tips channel and we'll give you some insight into that as well or talk to us over at Boffix. Now, normally it's standard versus cash. Cash is if you're going to have a lot of trade debtors and you're gonna to have to spend a while for those trade debtors to pay you, then normally under normal circumstances, you're better off being on cash because you don't wanna be having to pay over VAT until you've physically collected it from your customers. Whereas standard is typically beneficial for people who get paid quite early on or get paid right on time when it comes to their debtors. You have to put your VAT registration number in. And then you have the option for a flat rate scheme as well. Now again, flat rate scheme is about making sure that it can make it really simple for you. Talk to your accountant if that's the right one for you or head over to Buffett's Tax Tips channel. Now we did do an actual video here on this channel about flat rate scheme and what it looks like to turn it on. So maybe it'd be worthwhile having a look at that one. But again, it's a scheme that if it's right for you, you should really already know about it. Once you have heard about that, you press next and okay. Then the big question arrives. 
making tax digital. Now, with QuickBooks Online, you can't file your VAT return unless you are a making tax digital client. Now, that means filing natively. You still have the option of filing through HMRC if you are not yet making tax digital compliant. But if you are looking to file directly through QuickBooks itself, you will need to become making tax digital. Now, it's not the end of the world. It is something that nearly enough all of our clients have moved over to now. And I promise you that it's... I have not found very many reasons why people haven't moved over just yet. Now, making tax digital itself is coming and will be enforced within a year's time from this recording this video. So it is something you're going to have to move on to at some point anyway. So at this point, though, you get to choose to either say that you are an MTD compliant company or you're not. If you don't need MTD, press the MTD one. We're going to go and look at that one first. Press done. And at that point, then, we are ready to file our VAT return. So what have we got in front of us? Well, first of all, this area at the top is all giving you information about what's going on. In fact, to make this more useful, let's jump into our live client now that we've set ourselves up. And we'll see some data related to it. And in Flight Magic, we now have data to look at. So this area at the top here is giving me an indication of what my next VAT return is going to be. So I've collected almost £2,000 on sales. I've paid over £800 in purchases and got that to claim back. Therefore, I've got just over a grand to pay over to HMRC. So this area here is supposed to give me some indication of what my next VAT return is going to be like so that I don't have any nasty surprises along the way. Down the bottom here, we have a chance to see what's opened and what's already been filed. So this is going to give us a breakdown of which returns I've still got to file with HMRC and which ones I haven't yet filed with HMRC. And then at the top right hand corner, we have your edit options. So I can edit some settings and that's going to you'll see is the exact same questions you were asked when we set up our VAT account. But we have one extra question and that's turn on MTD. We're going to have a look at that in a moment. Edit VAT, we've got edit rates as well. Highly recommend that you look into this edit rates option. You want to only show the rates applicable to your business. And you have the option on the right hand side to turn off anything you need to. So maybe I don't want this mileage figure anymore. Maybe I don't want to have the PBA so I'm not dealing with EU transactions anymore. I can just turn that one off and then it disappears from the list. Now, if I need to bring that one back again, so let's turn another one off. All I need to do is I go into the company cog in the top right -hand corner, press include inactive, and then I can press the tick box and that will bring that back into the active ones for me. I can also add new tax rates. If there's any reasons for you to add new tax rates, you can do it right at the top there. You also have the option to add a whole new tax as well. So maybe you've got other taxes you need to add and you need to make sure that they're being tracked and you can use that to track directly in QuickBooks Online. But we're here about VAT. So how do we go about looking to file our first VAT return? Well, it's really straightforward, actually. First of all, you want to make sure your data is correct. The best way to do that is to use the drop down arrow and use error check your return. What this does is it uses the opportunity to use a bit of AI, a bit of common sense, and it's going to go through and look for common errors within your return. So that's going to give you confidence you're happy about it. The first thing it's going to tell you is that anything that you've got excluded from your VAT period. So if I click on review now, is there anything in here that I've put to no VAT, which actually I should have put to a different VAT? And it gives me the chance to go down these numbers and find out if they're correct or not. I also have the opportunity to see if there's any bank transactions that I haven't yet reconciled or at least added to QuickBooks Online. And this is really key. This is going to tell me if there's anything yet that I've not considered for that, that period. So before I file the return, it's making sure I've got everything included. It's going to review any unexpected items for you. So has is there any duplicates? Is there any inconsistent VAT codes or any items or exceptions? VAT exceptions are items that appear on your VAT return which relate to a different period. And this is mostly down to the fact you've made some sort of adjustment or some sort of correction to what you originally filed. Now, I 
urge you all that if you see an exception to have a look into that exception report which is really easy we're going to have a look at that in a moment and just make sure that each and every one of those transactions are actually prime the worst thing you can do in this position now is not put that correction so please 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 do check that exception report make sure each and every one of those transactions have correctly been adjusted so there's a legitimate reason why you may have filed it once one way and now you find it filing it a different way now for example, if you're now collecting some VAT on something you didn't collect it before, then make sure you do have the necessary documents to be able to back up that input VAT claim. Let's have a look and see exactly what it looks like. Okay, so it says so it says here VAT transactions may be exceptions. If I click on there, it's gonna give me this wonderful report. It's basically gonna tell me what we originally filed, which in this case was zero, and what we're filing now, and it'll tell you the difference between the two. Now, the reason there's a difference here is because we missed this off our original return, and now we're including it on this return. Again, make sure each one of these is legitimate. You shouldn't have as many as this, but if you have one of them, then please, please, please do make sure that they're there. Take a closer look. It will show you the largest transactions and the largest from income and expenditure. Always good, to, especially those largest expenses one. Make sure you've got a copy of the invoice on, things like that, to make sure you're happy with them. And then you have a nice little breakdown of all the different VAT codes used. So you can quickly go and review them, making sure you're happy with each and every one. Once you're happy with that, press prepare now. And that's going to take you to your VAT return. Now, one extra thing I would highly recommend at this point is make sure you do your sense checks. So, before you file, make sure that you go into accounting and reconcile. And from reconcile, use this handy little summary button up here and make sure that all of these accounts have been reconciled on or after they are. So, for me, this one here, although these two are reconciled correctly, probably want to just make sure this one's reconciled to at least after my VAT return date because that means I'll have confidence then that that business bank account is going to be correct. Remember another sense check that always goes well is that profit and loss by month. Bring up the return period. And just make sure that you've got sense into what expenses are going through in income streams. So, for example, here I've got travel expenses in December, but not in January and February. I probably want to look into that. I've got running computer running costs in, in December, but not January and February again. And I'm looking at printing and postage in two. I don't have it there. Is there a reason for that? Those are the sort of things I want to be checking and making sure. When you are happy with that, then you can either go back to the error check my report or you can look at some of these other reports. So a really good one is this download audit report just here. And what that will do is give me a nice little report basically telling me everything that's included in that VAT return. This is the report I like to keep a copy of and keep a safeness of because this is going to tell me everything I need to know about what's on my next VAT return. Finally, I'm going to go and do my view summary. <laughs> Finally, if I press prepare return, notice how it's not letting me file the return. And that's because of this error message here. Market has filed if you've submitted your return. So I'm going to start submit directly from QuickBooks. Enable Bacon Tax Digital. And they even have a really handy guide to look into it a little bit more. So for me to file this, all I need to do is, first of all, enable back making tax digital i know i'm not making tax digital because i don't have a wonderful stamp up here you'll see that in a minute so i'm going to turn mtd on so all i do is i go to edit settings turn on mtd i've signed up for making tax digital press got it yes get started and now i'm connected to hmrc i know now i've got making tax digital working because up here it says making tax digital enabled now, when making tax digital comes in, one of the great things it's going to tell you if there's any issue. So here it's telling me I've got an issue. Click on take action and it will tell me how to get connected to HMRC. Now, with this being a demo account, I can't physically connect it to HMRC. But what I can do is edit settings. Once I've solved all those issues and got myself connected, I can prepare return. And the return here will basically tell us the following. What amount that we've got to file and I can click into each and every one of these button so I can see a breakdown of each of those actual figures. 
I can see my exceptions that we talked about. So I can adjust here accordingly and I can make any final adjustments I might need to. Then all I need to do is submit via HMRC and we're all good. And there we have it. There's a way of looking forward at making sure that you file your VAT return. Now, the thing to remember about this is, A, you need to be making tax digital to file directly in QuickBooks. You can still generate your return if you're not MTD, but you can't file it through QuickBooks. So just remember that bit. And then the other thing to remember, and then also remember to look at making those VAT error checks look into that report that's generated. That's gonna be a great way of saving a lot of money in, in mistakes and making sure that you've got confidence in your VAT return before you file it. Make sure you reconcile your VAT bank accounts at bare minimum and I'll have a look at that profit and loss by month to also see if there's any errors or issues you might wanna look into. Hope you can see it's a really easy process of filing your VAT return. And once you press submit, you also get a nice little element from HMRC telling you it's been filed, giving you confidence that it's been filed and letting you know there's been no errors at all. Let us know below, how have you found filing your return through QuickBooks Online? Have you found it a pleasant experience? Have you had any issues or anything else? Most issues relating to filing on QuickBooks has been down to MTD itself and the Teven problems HMRC have presented. Once you get past those issues, normally you'll find it's quite easy flowing and actually it's quite a simple way of getting your return filed HMRC. Obviously, you're going to want to make sure you get that data in efficiently, so do keep subscribed to the channel. We've already done a lot of content in terms of how to get data into QuickBooks and we'll be doing a whole lot more to make sure you're supported in getting the information into your QuickBooks online. My name's been Aaron Patrick. Hopefully you found this video at all helpful. My name's Aaron Patrick. Hope you found this video helpful. Please do consider liking and subscribing. That's going to help massively with the video, massively with the channel and helps us beat that whole algorithm with YouTube itself. My name's been Alan Patrick. It's been an absolute pleasure to do this video for you. I um, hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now. Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's real and new Even if we're staying bad My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him na, 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 na My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chat. Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description. But it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.